here's what we left off with last time. So we've got just sort of this basic Pikachu. I want to try to play a little bit with text and show you some of the features that you can do with that rather simply. Right now I've got the Pikachu and I've got the background. I think I'm going to go ahead and hide the background. So in my layers here, on this side, I'm going to go ahead and I'll just pull this out to make it a little bit easier to see. I'll click this arrow and we can see all the different little paths and things that I made here. I'll hide the background, just clicking the eyeball. And now that's gone. I think that's fine. All of my points look pretty good. Even working on top of the photo, I think everything looks pretty decent. So I think what I want to do is maybe write Pikachu underneath, but on sort of an arc. I'm going to grab all of Pikachu's parts, move him up a little bit. Once I've highlighted everything, I'm using my arrow keys to move up. I can hold shift and move by more, or I can do more uh, small amounts by just the arrow keys without holding shift. I'm going to grab a pin tool and make a point and try and keep this line straight. I'm not holding down, I'm just moving it over. Right now that line is sort of a helper line, right? I'm going to click and I'm going to hold down and create an arc about the way that I think looks pretty good. I don't want a really strong arc, I want sort of a soft arc or a gentle arc, maybe around there. Okay, and I'm going to press escape. Now it's borrowing colors from before and that's okay, I'm, I don't really care about that right now. On my type tool, I'm going to click and hold down and I'm going to get the type on a path tool. And then from there, I'm going to sort of hover over where the arc is, and that will let me type on it. So then I can type Pikachu. And notice that the, the colors inside of the stroke or inside of the path disappeared, right? Because now I'm using the path only for the font. Right now, this is really small. So I can select this, and I can change some of the properties over here in the properties window. I'm going to make this quite a bit bigger. And right now we can see that it's it's like going off the edge, right? I clicked in the middle and it's starting in the middle, but I clicked in the middle because I want to center it, which still doesn't look the way that I want. Let's see. So I need to shift this over. So if I switch to the move tool or the direct selection tool, it doesn't matter which one. I've got these lines. And these lines let me pull over where the start of my letters are. So kind of there-ish. I think that looks pretty good. I can go back in and edit this a little bit easier now. Maybe somewhere around there. And I think I want bold. This font doesn't offer bold, so I maybe need to switch my font. I'm going to go with Helvetica. And I'll go with bold. And once again, it doesn't really quite feel centered. Where that center line is, here it is. I want to drag it right underneath. There we go. I think that looks a little better. We can see Pikachu himself is a little off, right? So maybe I want to grab this point with the direct selection tool and move that up so it doesn't feel as close to the letters. Now it feels a little bit better balanced. Now that we've made these letters here, what can we do with them? In my properties panel over here, I can play with some different things. So I've got like the fill, I've got the stroke, right? I can still do some of those things. I think I want the colors to sort of match the way that the Pokemon styling is done. So the fill would need to be yellow, right? And if I click here, I don't have colors, but I can go to this and this will give me colors, right? So I can choose a yellow that I think looks decent. I can also tweak it a little bit using the sliders instead, which may be easier. And then a stroke color. And for the stroke color, that is normally a blue, and I need to make it a little bit thicker. Now, as I'm doing this, we can see that it's looking a little weird, right? It's, it's chopping in certain areas. So there's some things that we can do with this to make this work a little bit better. So first, I'm going to drag my layers panel back down here to kind of get it out of the way. There we go. And I'm going to click on this Appearance tab. And this gives me some other options. Right now we don't see a whole lot in here because it's type. But if I change this into Outlines, and then I ungroup, 
now we can see what I was looking for. So these are no longer letters. Now these are vector shapes that happen to be in the shape of letters. And doing that, I have a little bit more flexibility. I can play with some of the options in the stroke, which we could do before over there as well. But we also have stuff with fill. And then I can also add new fills and new strokes. And I can change the order also. So right now, the stroke is cutting into the fill. If I drag this above the stroke, now that shouldn't happen, although I didn't have anything selected. Let's try this again. There we go, right? And then I can make the stroke thicker without it actually overlapping the inner part. Now the stroke is starting to overlap a little bit with other letters, so I can move these apart. I can't use the type tool anymore to do this because it's not type anymore, right? So by doing the create outlines, all of this is actually now just vector points and lines and curves in the shape of letters. Now what that also means though is I can edit it the same way. And if you're familiar with the Pokemon font, right, it's not even on all the parts, right? Some parts are thick, some parts are thin, right? So Making outlines is useful too because now I can go into here. I'm going to zoom in with Command Plus. Move this where I want it to go. I can use my arrow tool and I can actually move where some of these points are, right, to make some parts thicker and some parts thinner, which should give us a better idea or a better approximation to the actual font, right? I'm not going to worry about it being exactly perfect right now. Um, so I'm just sort of doing the feel of it without worrying about like is it exactly the same way the company does theirs but it should give it more uh, of the feel from the actual series and games so just using these points clicking on them using my arrow tools to move things around I can make it look a little bit more feel a little bit more the way that it actually does in the original title. Now right now I'm just moving points but if I want to I can also play with the handles too so I can drag this point or I can drag these handles also to kind of change the way that the uh, the arcs work and that adjusts the curve a bit. That is a little bit trickier but once you understand how it works it does get a little bit easier. I'm kind of doing it right now just to show you and that's probably not the best reason to actually do it right. I should probably have a good strong reason before I just start messing with it but hopefully you get the idea. That's a little wonky. Maybe pull that one up a little bit. 